Trump is that ill. Bro, what inspired you to oh, do that? Um, yeah, man, what inspired me, like, you know, ever since I was, first of all, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, and you know, Trump is right there in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Trump did so much for us on the East Coast, man, that it's so messed up that they're looking at him this kind of way. I was a little kid going on field trips to the Trump Plaza, and he was talking to us, just giving back. And, and, and what everybody want to do is they want to take his money, like as far as um, the stimulus checks and everything, they just want to take it and be lazy at home and not do nothing with it and then just want more, 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 more. That's messed up, man. Trump 2020, man, he's going to win, you feel me? And another thing, we're going through the coronavirus, and I hope him and, Me and Melanie gets better very soon. We're going through the coronavirus, and he gave us the chance to stay home with our family and give us money to, to just, you know, start all over. And that's the things he get? Come on, man. Y'all need to wake up, man. Wake and up. And you need to get some shoes like and this. And get these kicks. These are the only ones, too. <laughs> yeah. Wicked Witch, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Trump. Put it like this, when it comes to politics, sometimes it's better just to take the, the candidates out of it, take the president out of it, take the uh, uh, Republican, Democrat, take that all out of it and just base your vote, base your support on those who are uplifting the country as opposed to those who are tearing down the country. At the end of the day, that's all it really boils down to. We need to stop worrying about the partisanship of this and that and just vote uh, uh, based on your morals based on what's really going on for our country and what's going to benefit our country in the long run, what's going to put more money into your pocket, you know? Do you want tax cuts or do you want ta a tax hike, you know? So at the end of the day, just vote your conscience, vote your morals, and vote, uh, uh, do a little research before you vote. How about that for an idea? And, uh, you know, make sure you take the partnership out of it and uh, you'll be just fine, I must say.
the camera for you. Uh, I bought the camera. Really? Yeah. With whose money? With my own money. I don't think you bought it with your own money. Do you know who George Soros is? Yeah. What's your opinion on him? What's my what? What's your opinion on him? Uh, I don't have an opinion on him. You don't have an opinion on a trained Nazi? No. Why not? Are you a white supremacist? No, I'm not. So why do you not have an opinion on a trained Nazi named George Soros? I just don't know too much about him. What about, well, what about him? He participated in the Nazi extermination of the Jews, and on 60 Minutes he said it was the best time of his life. And now he's funding left-wing organizations such as Antifa and BLM to try to cause the same thing that Hitler did to Germany, to America. A fucking national socialist takeover. That's what, what, it, is. what are your sources for that? The sources? All the evidence that we can see right now? So, uh, are you defending George Soros? All the evidence here in Beverly Hills right now? No, not here. That we see in the public uh, sphere. If you look at George Soros' donation channel? history, you will find he's donated what? millions of dollars to left-wing causes. Are you from a channel? I hit you up a little bit? Yep. Because usually people who have expensive cameras and everything else is cheap as hell uh, are paid for by George Soros, that's why. What else is cheap as hell? Uh, all your other stuff. And then your media stuff is expensive as fuck. Yeah. So you always see Antifa dressed in black blocks and they have like $60,000 of equipment all over them, communications equipment. God knows who that's feeding to. Uh, probably some channel like yours where mostly uh, left-wing people show up. Gotcha. How do you know I'm left-wing? What, what because, gives well, me because you, saw, you asked me for sources when I'm saying that George Soros is a fucking publicly admitted Nazi. But if it's, you've done your research, shouldn't you be able to give me sources? Yeah, I said 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes? That, uh, you, know the, you know the show 60 Minutes? I do. I've never heard anything that you're saying on 60 yeah, Minutes. Yeah, so go but... watch his interview with uh, Chris Wallace, the snake, his dad, interviewed George Soros. Okay. Uh, and asked him, so were you part of the Nazi extermination? And he said yes. Uh, and how did you feel about it? Well, it was the best time of my life. And if asked if he would regret it, he said, it's just like the market. If nobody else, if I didn't do it, somebody else would do it. So that's how he thinks of his own people, moral relativists. Do you need a plate holder out here today? A what? A plate holder. What is that? Chest. Oh, this? Yeah, this is a um, armor. Obviously, we heard Antifa is going to show up. They showed up. They had armor. But they weren't really looking to attack, they were just yelling. So we yelled at each other, and they walked away. Uh, I guess they went to demonstrate down the street. You've been brainwashed by the media. You've been brainwashed. You've 
Okay. <laughs> Lisa, tell me a little bit more about this. What are you doing out here today? So I'm Lisa Simpson, 2020 U.S. presidential candidate running on the United Human Race Party. I'm a peace and love humanitarian, not a politician, third party candidate. Based on the Simpsons predicted prediction that Lisa would win after a Donald Trump term in office. And so uh, what are the predictions that the Simpsons gotten right? So they predicted Trump would win. They had him going down the escalator with a woman dropping her sign, which is also what happened in real life. I legally changed my name to Lisa Simpson to help make the prediction come true. And I am just like her. Uh, when I was eight years old, that's when I started my activism and my sense of what's justified, right and wrong. Um, very connected to heart and soul. And I was a little isolated loner where I'm trying to warn the world that we need to do something and stand up for it. And you know, outcasted, you know, kind of condescended to, and ultimately, was just, you know, isolated, just like most Trump, a lot of people that support Trump, support the QAnon movement. We've all been social and political outcasts most of our lives. And I'm seeing that the QAnon movement's getting some traction. What are the basic uh, foundations of QAnon? Sure, so QAnon, started October 27th with the first couple military intelligence drops. Now, that information that Q lets out, that's something that most of us have been known about for like several dozen decades. Like I say, most QAnons and Patriots, we started this 30 to 60 years ago, basically since JFK was assassinated. And of course, that's when the CIA coined the term conspiracy theorist as a way to like deflect attention away from that very suspicious death assassination um, and so these are salt to the earth people these again are all social um, and political outcasts we know what it's like to live life just having to take solace in our own independent free mind um, and that really breeds you into a very strong person uh, we just don't have mom mentality we don't follow the crowd we know how to stand up in a face of a crowd that completely disagrees with us to the point where that crowd wants That's to be right. violent Keep talking. Keep talking. yes oh thank you darling yeah. And uh, we just heard the news this week that Donald Trump has COVID. Any messages for him or any messages about that? Um, I think he's going to have a very productive 14-day quarantine. Um, I don't particularly believe that he has it. Uh, it's very odd timing. Q drops from a couple weeks ago brought up October 2nd, or um, also it could be interpreted as October 10th. I don't understand how Trump has it and his wife at the same time, but not Joe Biden. I think it's weird that at the debate, he like brought out a mask and like went out of his way to say he was wearing a mask. Um, so I think he's gonna come out of the 14 days saying he was cured using HCQ. And any other messages that you'd like to get out there? Thank you. Um, so yeah, I run a nonprofit to end racism called I Don't Know You, But I Love You. And I've been doing that since before Black Lives Matter started. My race relations work started 25 years ago. And so, unfortunately, for the left, for the Democrats, for Biden, and for the media narrative, I put a huge dent in this claim of white supremacy and not caring about black lives. I literally cared when nobody else cared. I was political before anyone else. And so I just had an altercation with a girl. Um, and she said that she just wishes our side would take this election more seriously. And I said, oh yeah, I totally understand and I agree. I take it so seriously that I started 25 years ago. When did you start? And she got very upset and flustered because she knows what I'm getting at. She only started to care because the social media told her to care. She's only angry because the media tells her to be angry. And she started saying, just because you know more than me, does it, uh, does it mean anything? And it's like, no, it actually does. Doing your own research, having an independent mind, it does matter. And that's what America is all about. How do you think we had the American Revolution? That had to do with saying no to something and coalescing with people to fight for your right to have liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And so here's my uh, message right here. Don't be dumb. And why did you get that tattooed on you? Yes. So I got this, um, you know, God told me to get it so I can, I didn't know at the time that I would ever have to prove that I'm not racist and that I care about black lives so much that I've sacrificed having a family, getting married, I've sacrificed financial stability just to live 20 years of being an activist to end racism. And so I am just such a dent in that whole argument and I would never stoop so low and pandering to say black lives matter. I've been saying I love black culture, I love black life 
For me, it's not about mattering or liking. Like, I truly love black culture. I went to a black middle and high school, and they're the ones that taught me how to stand up for yourself, how to give respect, how to earn respect. You know, they don't pull any punches. They will know in a second if you're not being authentic. And so what I learned was how to be an authentic person, you know, watch myself, watch what I say, and just, you know, make sure I'm like fitting in. Um, and I honestly think a lot of the Black Lives support is out of fear. Sure, of course, it's white guilt. I honestly think it is a fear of black culture because my high school, my middle school was violent, but I learned how to not get in fights. I learned how to not get my ass beat, you know what I mean? And so I, the media, right, has spent decades showing us what? Black people are criminals. Look at all the fighting. What has YouTube and the internet done? Look at all these black people getting into a fight. So they've shoved this violent cultural behavior and then all of a sudden about faced and switched and was like, um, you know, how about this people? How about this culture? And it's just like, you're the reason why people are afraid. But who's gonna admit that? But I will. I, we all have violent tendencies. They all come out in different ways. And so this is because Obama, as a black president, had a chance to address the disadvantages of black culture. And nobody wants to call it out, but Candace Owens will, Jesse Lee Peterson will. There's many black vocal leaders right now that will address what's going on in black culture. And we have to do something about this. I mean, a lot of this is coming from the extremely rough streets, from the ghettos, the projects. I fostered a Mexican gang youth. It was honestly one of the sickest insights of what really is going on in America. This gang life, this violent life, it is out of control. It's super demonic. And um, it's a force that needs to be reckoned with. But no, we're letting, we're letting kids, we're letting babies get shot in Chicago. Hundreds and hundreds of people dying in Chicago. That's where Obama comes from. What did he do about it? He's done nothing. Okay, black cultures, along with a lot of, again, uh, white pandering activists are out there so afraid that they're um, supporting the burning down, right, and looting of stores and of, of cities and everything. And it's just like, uh, throughout human civilization, it's been very violent and it is scary and overwhelming and intense. But, you know, if you don't cling to life and you just stand up for what's right, you might get a few hits to the face, but you'll be okay. And I'll definitely take a hit just to always serve God and stand for what I believe in. And who's your vice president? I, I keep forgetting to get one. Actually, <laughs> I, I keep forgetting. What's the best case scenario? Who would, who would be your pick? I, I know. Oh, well, see, any choice that I would pick, I almost feel like I'm insulting them. But Candace Owens, Charlie Kirk, you know, Ben Shapiro, like all these great up-and-coming conservative voices that have completely changed the Republican Party and changed the conservative movement. So I would never insult them with the VP position. They are more articulate um, and eloquent and intelligent. But I will be like that one day. I'll get to where they're at. Good luck, and don't forget me when you become president. Oh, I, I don't forget anyone. I am presidents. I'm a people's president. I'm here to walk the street. I want to literally put my desk outside on the street and just be one with the people all day long. Um, that's always been my dream, for me to be completely accessible to the American people. To all my Latino voters out there, you gotta understand in the next 10 years, we are the largest independent contracting self-employed community. If the Democrats take the power, they're gonna tax the living shit out of us, okay? We need a free market and less regulations. Now Tesla, Facebook, Google, and all these Silicon Valley companies, they're, they're supporting the Democratic Party because they wanna enter the Chinese market. Now, the Chinese market may be the largest consumer in the market in the world, but the United States have the power and we're doing a great job. Number two, we need jobs back. We need to be self-sufficient, self-reliant. We're purchasing 90% of our essentials from China. Now, as an investor, if you invested in a Chinese, uh, uh, if you invested in an American company in China that was mining gold, it was nationalized. That means it, it was taken from you. So imagine the Chinese Communist Party nationalizing all of essentials. We will be in ruins. So Donald Trump's idea is to bring back our, our self-sufficiency uh, and be self-reliant. So vote for Donald Trump, Latinos, Salvadorians, baby, all the way. Now, what does it look like if Biden wins? What's it, what's oh, no, you're looking at, uh, well, you're looking at this. Uh, 
the, the money situation, the taxes, the economy, they're gonna come after you. The, right now we have a lot of freedom to make money, a lot of freedom to do what we please with our money and with our income. When the socialists come in, all of that is gonna stop, brother. You're gonna get taxed the living shit out of all your income. I mean, if you enjoy America now, just wait till the socialists take party. You wanna go, you, you are going to wanna go back to El Salvador. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's a free market and a free regulation. The reason we came to this country, because we had a free market and we had an American dream. You vote for Biden, they take that from us. They, they're gonna give us an opportunity just to uh, uh, get food stamps, just to get social programs, but no opportunities. You get what I'm saying? So uh, 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 have your local officials accountable, have your state accountable. Uh, they're running your budgets, they're, they're running your, your, your states horribly. Uh, Garcetti is running your city horribly. Look at uh, the two, three million, two billion dollars that was given to California two years ago. What happened to, to the homeless people? I see more homeless people now uh, than ever. Democratic run cities are horrible, look at them. So at the end of the day, uh, 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 as a former Democrat, I have become a Donald Trump supporter because he's doing great for our country. And like he said, he's done more in 47 months than Biden in 47 years. I love America, baby.
party anymore. It's, it's completely shifted. True. It's true. super shifted towards climate. I'm just saying, man. Okay. But you know why he doesn't control me? He doesn't control nobody here because we're all free people and we don't do what he says all the time. And we want to hold it's on to those power. freedoms. It's not the president, brother. You have to understand the president is it's the part face of, our of America. Movement. The real problem and the real power in America is not Trump, brother. It's the House of Representatives, your Congress, your, sen your senators. Everybody who represents your state, your county, those are the people you got to get on their ass to make a difference. Because Trump is a face to the world for America. He's a rep representation of us. But he's not what the media makes him seem. If, if Trump was racist, why do people like uh, Steve Harvey, Kanye West, Tupac Shakur, all these famous black people, they all used to associate with Trump. They all did. The only time that Trump became a racist was when the media started editing shit and make it seem like he was this person that's not true. Okay, do you know about video editing, audio editing? I'm not sure if you know about that. Video editing and audio editing. Let's go. 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 Let's go.
and I'm proud of it. I am very proud of shoving terrorists. Yeah, bro, it's... You're, you're proud of hurting people yeah. or what? Sir, yeah, it was very you cool. To calm down from the beginning. It was very cool to shove a terrorist when you ain't getting my face. She put her hands on me, dude. You didn't see that? She put her hands on me, dude. I need to go to a hospital. I need to go to a hospital. Terrorists. I have a last number. 
Can you explain? Stand up. Stand up. Oh. What you're so, is the way you're talking to her is so disgusting right now. The way you're talking to her is so disgusting. How oh. oh. dare you talk to her like that? What is she, a rat? Who do you think you are, a campaign manager? Who's campaign manager? Where's 